Hey everyone. I don't know about you, but I'm finally starting to feel that relief from the eclipse energy. Like, <laughs> thank God. <laughs> we have really been integrating. You know, we've really been having to walk the walk, not just talk the talk when it comes to our spiritual journey. And really recognizing more things about ourselves and then asking ourselves, what are you going to do about it? How are you going to make these changes? How are you going to stop making the same decisions you've always made, right? And that's what we really have been um, being asked to do, like um, setting boundaries, um, you know, all these different things that are a change from what we're used to, how we're used to responding to life. We're asking to, uh, the, the eclipse energies really were asking us to address those. And I'm finally feeling a little relief from all that integration, all of like the, the courage and vulnerability it takes to really um, dig into that shadow process. Um, but it's a beautiful thing. Now, this morning I was meditating and I don't meditate in the traditional sense of meditating. Um, what I like to do is just put on some music. Like this morning I did Native American flute music. I just find random videos on YouTube that have different meditation music. I love Celtic music when I'm like reading. Like, so when I read, you know, Dolores Cannon did those three volumes of the Nostradamus conversations. Oh, it wasn't conversations with Nostradamus, was it? I can't remember the exact um, name of the books, but it was Dolores Cannon's uh, three books on Nostradamus. And when I would read those, I would listen to like Celtic music or like, I would totally get into the energy. When I do things, I get into the energy of, um, what I'm feeling at that time. Like I really, it's like when you want to, when you're in a regression or something and you want to go into a past life and the more you bring all your senses into it, the more you heighten that energy. So you feel what it's like to be there. You hear what it's like to be there. Maybe you even taste something in the room or smell something in the room and that's how you activate and become more aware, more hyper, like it's the sensitivity of um, all of your senses. Um, so like if you really want to tap into an energy, you can do that. So when I meditate, sometimes I do that. And this morning, I really wasn't sure. I just kind of sometimes I'll just hit the home on my YouTube and see what videos come up because I'll have a lot of um, uh, different types of meditation music come up, um, because I listen to it often. So I'll see what comes up in the scramble. It's like spirits bringing me one. It's like, you know, it's like spinning the wheel and seeing what you get. And sometimes I do that. And this morning I did that and Native American flute music came up. So I just put it on and I was sitting there and I was just listening to it and letting whatever thoughts or feelings come up that came up, were coming up within me, just allowing it, not like, this is the thing, when you're really distracted in life, when you're really distracted by the matrix and what you got to do today and your agenda list or drama going on in your relationship, you're not, when you get, like, you put on some music, you're not necessarily able to um, just allow what naturally wants to come up because you're so fixated on things that don't matter, you're distracted. But if you can really detach from all those things, all those distractions on the outside, and put on some music and just allow things to come up. So sometimes I'll play like Candy Crush because then like if I'm distracting myself with that, I can really just tune in or I'll do a puzzle and then I can really just tune in. Like sometimes I listen to audiobooks and do puzzles and then I'm really zoned in on the book. Whereas if I would just listen to it and just sit there and listen, my brain would go other places, right? So I'm like, you have to understand yourself and understand how you can really tune in. So I figured out these different ways that I'm able to tune in. And this morning I was listening to that Native American flute music and things were coming to me, you know? And so I just start writing it down and it becomes automatic, right? Usually I'll write like a sentence and then all of a sudden I'm just, and I'm writing super fast or typing it in my phone and spirit comes through me. I just connect to my higher self. I connect to all aspects of me and space and time that are connected to source. All those gifts, all of those like high vibrational frequencies that I've ever experienced in any given moment, in any lifetime, I actually had this, um, I connected to spirit and did this automatic writing once. And this was probably a few years ago. 
but I had this whole like uh, visual aid that showed how you lived all these different lifetimes like spirit trying to help me explain it to people what the higher self was and all that stuff like you are the droplet within the ocean but that you still are the ocean even though you've come here in this human experience to become to be this unique aspect of yourself so anyways I should get that out uh, another time and and show you guys so you have an idea of what I'm speaking about but when um you connect to get these messages that's what you're tapping into you're uh, tapping into all aspects of you in space and time connected to source um so anyways I get through and I'm uh I wrote down what I was gonna write and the kids are home from school so I was like okay I gotta figure out you know I'm gonna go out to the truck and and deliver this message and I was just sitting there for a minute and I came across this quote on my phone and it was a Charles Darwin quote and it was it's not the strongest of the species that survives, nor the most intelligent. It is the one that is most adaptable to change. And I was like, whoa, like that is exactly, <laughs> that is exactly what spirit is trying to tell me this morning. What is trying to, the message um, spirit trying to connect me with. And um, I'm going to read this message and then I'm going to read that quote again. And you're going to totally feel me on what I mean when it comes to the strongest of the or the strongest the species that survives is the one that's most adaptable to change because that's totally it on the spiritual journey as well and in general in life and so i'm gonna read this um what spirit brought through and see how you connect with it see how um see what it does for you all right we are closed off to viewing all perceptions Therefore, our ability to recognize the need for change or growth is minimized. We have blinders on, our hands over our eyes saying, I don't, don't show me that because I already know the truth. Truth is ever expanding. There is no ending to the capacity to which one can expand. We want to close our eyes to anything that isn't of the light. Yet even with our eyes closed, that shadow is still there. Why not understand it? Understanding the shadow is what releases the fear of it. Understanding is expansion. It is growth. It is opening up to a vulnerability that reveals acceptance and love. It is becoming comfortable with the uncomfortable. Opening up your heart to what you fear the most. Vulnerability is the ultimate act of courage. It takes humbleness and grace, putting down our armor that shields us in the guise of safety. The ego defense mechanism thinks it's protecting you, but it's merely holding you back from authentic authentically showing up as the ever-expanding infinite being that you are. And that's just it. It's about becoming comfortable with the uncomfortable. It's being willing to change. It's being willing to say, to like not be attached to all these programs that we've been um, born into. It's being willing to say that, hey, maybe what I've always thought is true isn't exactly adding up anymore. You know, it's it's just that deep vulnerability to be willing to even listen and really truly listen to another perspective. Really truly sit and allow somebody to speak and listen to what they have to say and set how we think or feel about it aside and try to put yourself in someone's shoes because the more you can the more perceptions and the more perspectives that you can take in the more aware you become that's why dipping into your shadow is recognizing more about yourself understanding more about yourself being willing to look at your shit being willing to admit it even exists right so it is not the strongest of the species that survives nor the most intelligent it is the one that is most adaptable to change that is ex the exact message that spirit was bringing through it's being able to change it's being able to and willing to grow it's being able to accept the situation for what it is and being able to hop on a different timeline or set a boundary or whatever you have to do it's um, dropping these attachments to these belief systems that we have held like white knuckling it 
holding on to it for dear life because it feels safe. It's what we've always known. Like getting out of your comfort zone, being comfortable with the uncomfortable. That's what vulnerability is. Think about when you have a conversation or you get like, you get really comfortable talking one-on-one -on -one with somebody. You start opening up. You start telling them things that you normally wouldn't tell people. You start like seeing something different in you. Like sometimes there's people out there that make you feel so safe that you can just say anything. And we have to do that with ourselves. It's like we're afraid to even admit our like things about ourselves. We're afraid to even look at it, to even recognize that that exists. We think that we already know the truth when the truth isn't some um, stagnant thing that doesn't expand. The truth is ever expanding. The truth is growth and expansion. And that's what the universe um, is doing. It's ever expanding. And as that unique aspect of the universe, you're doing it a favor by opening up and being authentic and be having the courage to be vulnerable because that means that you're expanding yourself, which means you're assisting the universe in its expansion. And when you do that, you become a light. So you're not like a Jehovah's Witness force feeding this um, this information or the spiritual journey or whatever to somebody you are just being you and in organically by being you people see that and they gravitate towards that energy they gravitate they're like oh I like what that frequency feels like and and it gives them the, the courage to be vulnerable as well. It gives them the courage to have an uncomfortable conversation. If you notice people who are real closed off and they're afraid to be vulnerable, they are like scared shitless to have a hard conversation. They're, they're afraid to confront things, right? I've never really been that person, but because of like naturally being pretty vulnerable in my life and being very like not afraid to talk about the uncomfortable things. It scares people away because so many people are, right? And so I think that's why on my channel, I've really dipped in and talked about things on my journey that, you know, a lot of spiritual teachers aren't gonna come on and talk about because it's embarrassing or they wanna be perceived as perfect. They just wanna be seen in the light. and what really brings people to source and into higher frequencies and into the light is being vulnerable, talking about the uncomfortable things. Like that is where the growth is. That's the shadow work, getting really comfortable with the uncomfortable. Like let's talk about the stuff that's uncomfortable. Let's not avoid it. That's very avoidant. And like, you can see that in relationships. You can see that with different teachers. You can see that in so many different ways. People play it safe on their, on maybe on their channels and stuff. They're like, Ooh, I'm not going to touch that subject. I might lose some followers. It's like, yeah, but like, maybe you do trigger somebody, but maybe that is just what they needed to hear to think about it or perceive it in a different way. They need that perception. Everybody needs all those perceptions so they're able to expand and you take all that information and then you use discernment and then you decide what you're going to do with it right that's where the discernment comes in that's where you're like um are you going to keep doing the same thing over and over again are you going to be open to this new information and then you can discern and decide what you want to do with it but definitely don't keep making the same choices that didn't work before bring in some new perceptions try some different things see how it works if you fall cool guess what when you fail you grow you never lose when you fail you only grow unless you're stubborn and in victim mode and you just keep repeating the same cycles this does not have to be complicated. We complicated our fears complicated. When we choose to face our fears, when we choose to be comfortable in the uncomfortable and decide to make different choices, whether they work or not, it doesn't matter. That's where the expansion is because you're going to learn from that situation and then you know more of what you don't want. Therefore, you know more of what you do want. And so now this next time around, when you make another different choice, you can see how that goes. You can test those waters, right? But you'll start to see that you're going to fail um, once in a while, but you'll like, you'll start to make choices like Here's a great example. 
I think of like back decade ago and what the type of person that I would be attracted to, the type of mate that I would be attracted to. That type of person in comparison to what I'd be attracted to now is such night and day. And why? Because of the experiences, the failures, the being uncomfortable, putting myself in uncomfortable situations in order to learn, in order to grow, in order to understand myself better. I did. I actually did. And now guess what? I have high ass standards and that's a good thing. I don't just say, well, I'm just going to accept everyone for who they are. And yeah, I do accept accept and love people for who they are, but I can do that from a distance. I can set healthy boundaries for myself, right? So that's where discernment comes in. That's where learning yourself comes in. You start to make better choices over time. And those falls, they aren't going to hurt so bad. You're going to realize that you got a beautiful gift in it. And you're going to realize that you are worthy. You are this amazing being. And the more you love yourself and value yourself, the more you'll attract things that add to that. And so then your base frequency is going to raise. And so, yeah, sometimes you're going to dip down into the lower frequencies because we're all human. But at the end of the day, when you um, are just having like your normal solid day, that's going to be a higher frequency because you've been peeling back those layers and gradually working your way up. It's not a hierarchical thing. It's about you peeling back the layers, becoming more, coming more into your authentic self. Because even though we're connected to the one in, in, the, in the way that we help the universe expand is by raising our frequency, is by becoming more authentic, is by becoming comfortable with the uncomfortable, facing our shadow, allowing ourselves to expand and assist the universe in that way. So we have to get out of this space of refusing to make different choices, refusing to like look at life in different ways like here's another example and there is no right or wrong that's the thing everybody is just where they're at for where they need to be on their journey everybody wants to make rules when, as soon as people start making rules I'm like whoa 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 like start looking at different perspectives because you're getting attached so like veganism I was a uh, back in 2012 like my journey really started back in 2012 when I got into the health I was like on a whole health kick and I was a vegan for at least a year I can't even remember it might have been longer than that and I'm not anymore and I've expanded and and really changed my perception on different things and I'm not saying that's right I'm not saying that's wrong but I'm saying I don't judge it and I'm just following my intuition and where I'm guided because I know my body's different from other bodies. Like, you know what I'm saying? We are all different. Our bodies all need something different. So if you're trying to fit it all into a box, I wouldn't do it. <laughs> Cause that is just going to be one more attachment that you have to uh, heal your way out of. Um, for me, I've always been very, I've had low blood pressure. I've been sensitive to fainting. Salt is very important for me and in my diet. And so like that's I'm, the reason I'm saying that is because we are all unique. So to go out there and preach one thing to everybody and saying, this is the truth. It's like, it's it might be the truth for you. It might be the truth for your body. But everybody is different, right? Everybody is different and everybody's on their journey. And the more you feel like you have to be like, agree with everyone else or be a part of a group or fix your, or fit yourself in a box, the more you trap yourself and suffocate yourself. Because we are all on a unique journey. So don't try to be like somebody else because that's not what you came here to be. You came here to be you, not somebody else. Don't try to look for somebody to somebody else for all the answers because the answers are going to come within you. And you don't know how your journey can help somebody else. Like just spark that epiphany. And that's the thing about change. Like we can't change people. We can't heal people. That epiphany, that aha has to come from them. But can we plant the seeds? We sure can, but the way we do that is being our authentic self, being real, telling the truth, not coming on being fake and phony and wearing a mask and trying to pretend you got it all together because the truth of the matter is nobody does. 
And the more you can get comfortable <laughs> with admitting that and eat some humble pie and just be a humble person in general, be like, be proud of the fact that you're not perfect because that means that you're actually have the courage to be vulnerable and grow. You have the courage to be yourself in front of others. You don't have to put on a mask and pretend that you are perfect. And that's okay. And the more you do that, the more you allow others to do the same. And you bring and you're that safety. You make others feel safe because you, they know you're not judging them because you're not trying to fit into the box either. You're not trying to tell them to be part of some cult or group who th all think a certain way. You're just keeping it real because that's who you are. Real to who you are. And it's okay. If, it, it's weird to always agree with everybody on everything. That's how, that's like one of the ways I know that some people are like have their walls up or wearing a mask or they're like afraid to be vulnerable because they're trying to be like something else instead of just like going within and figuring out who they are authentically, which isn't going to be like anyone else. We're never going to totally agree with everyone on everything. I don't totally agree with my partner on every single aspect of life and that's okay. And I, you know, you, we want to be unique. How boring would it be if we were all the ex exact same? Boring. <laughs> like, we all had the favorite color red. We all only like to go to the ballet. <laughs> like, it's so boring. When everybody is emanating the most unique aspect of who they are, they bring something different to the table. And that's what this world needs. This world needs to go to Bob on the corner who makes these dope tables and wood burning art and all this stuff. And they also need Jill down the street who has her garden and is making these beautiful organic vegetables and doing song therapy in the garden every day that makes a higher vibrational frequency in her plants. Like you feel me? Like everybody is has something different to bring to the table. And if we can just stop being like everyone else and just be who we are and all bring that unique aspect to this world, do you know how insanely amazing and blissed out we all would be? And just contributing, like who do I, like we all would be co creating in such a beautiful way I've I've used this example before it's like it's like looking through a microscope at the a, a perfectly connected human body to source a high vibrational being and how the cells are working in harmony inside and you just seeing them dance together inside of that body inside of you know what I'm saying and then you look down at earth and we're all expressing our unique a uh, aspect of who we are that's how it would look Gaia as her conscious being would be that like high frequency being and we would be the cells that we're dancing along inside being our authentic selves being what we truly came to be feeding ourselves what we needed to be fed in order to be this high frequency that we know that we are it can be beautiful, but it's up to us. It's up to us as individuals. So we can, when you do your, it's like everybody got a different job because everybody's different. We're not in the same box. We're not factory workers going down a freaking, uh, what do they call assembly line? No, no. <laughs> We're like one person's Merlin in the woods doing whatever they have to do. <laughs> grounding the grid right and another person's doing this and another person's doing that and that's okay because actually that's more than okay that's beautiful because that is how this this uh <laughs> this beautiful cohesion this beautiful co-creation that is how we do it that's how we bring in new earth so Maybe we can just really start to tap in and listen to what's real for us and stop judging ourselves based on what others think or what others are doing or how others feel. And I think that's what Spirit is really asking us to do today. Whew. So yeah, guys, <laughs> get uncomfortable with the uncomfortable. And once you get to a place of peace and that, doing that shadow work, like really being like at peace with it um, and okay 
if nobody understands like <sighs> that's where it's at that's where I've learned it's at you know so I love you have an amazing holiday um and yeah I'll talk to you later